What's up and welcome back to the broadcast. I am your host and this is the Evan Era Podcast. I am joined today with a special guest host. Thank you for tuning in to episode 2. You might know him from the Netflix movie Natural Born Pranksters or his hit YouTube channel How to Prank It Up. So you want to know how to prank. Dennis Rohde. Thank you for being here, man. What's up? So, uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, you having fun with the uh, plasma ball here? This is a great idea to have at the table for right? people that have fidgety fingers. Right. Where they don't know what to do, and then I was like sitting here. Yeah, man. They can just start playing with this. It's kind of like like a rich boy fidget spinner. <laughs> I was thinking it's kind of like the, uh, if you've ever been to the restaurant Cracker Barrel, the little game that they yeah. have on the table, the little peg game. Just something to do while you're sitting there. You yeah, know? this would be cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, because if you had this in your car, then you'd have things you have to have an outlet. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Can you Thank imagine you. a bunch of kids driving around holding these, like, plasma balls? I actually have, like, a portable version of it that's uh, over there, like, on the set of How To Magic. That's cool. i play with it later. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, thanks for making the drive down to Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, not and, bad. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's good to see you. I was like what you set up the place. It looks great. Ava's got a nice... Uh, what is that thing called? A uh, go kart. Yeah, go kart over there. Yeah, but what's the roll bars on it? Yeah, it's uh, it's just safety bars. Yeah, oh, those are safety bars. bars. I feel like that's one of those like derby oh, cars. Oh, like a doom buggy. Doom buggy. Yeah, it looks like a little doom buggy. <sighs> For Halloween, she should go as uh. Oh, like Mad Max. Mad Max, dude. Yeah, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, man. Uh, good to see you. How's your son, Alex, doing? Alex is amazing. Yeah, good. he's good. Yep. Uh, non-stop action pack, you know. Yeah, Healthy. how's he uh, coping with the lockdown? Uh, well, we, we go outside all the time, so really the, the bad part is we bad. can't... Why haven't we gone to the trampoline park, Dad? Yeah. I want to go to Laser Craze, Dad. Yeah. You know, all those I want to go to Kings like, Island, uh, Dad. Well, Kings Island's open, but I don't know, it's just whatever. So yeah. we go outside in the woods and play there. Yeah, all those places uh, that my kid loved, uh, like Malibu Jacks and yeah. you know, all the video game places. and like uh, all the tr- Yeah, there's a place here called house of boom i think that changed its name to defy which is uh, oh, okay an unfortunate uh what is house of boom what is it well yeah it, house of boom is kind of, it's like a trampoline park it's like sky oh, cool. zone but yeah um all those places are shut down uh, indefinitely so yeah it's a bummer for kids dude you know? the best it's a bummer for parents too because i love going to the trampoline parks yeah. number one um it's just fun to watch a bunch of wild humans <laughs> running and jumping and then they crash into each other it's just so like true. it's literally happens every time you'll see like this little dude's jumping boom boom and then there comes the other dude boom boom and it's a mid-air collision yeah wow. chaos moms running to the rest the learning experience as though. they're putting their cell phones in their purse <laughs> yep it's a rite of passage for a kid i think the, yeah. Uh, yeah the mid-air collision oh yeah welcome to gravity and momentum yeah lesson you, 101 yeah you're learning it firsthand man <laughs> Let's so, yeah, uh, thanks for coming down. Um, glad. I like uh, your setup. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to uh, I wanted to kick it off by kind of talking about where we kicked off, like where we kind of met, how we I remember met. Evan when I went to Tom Maeve's office to go film a video, and Evan's office was there. Tom said he got this new guy to help him on the crew. It's Evan. Mm-hmm. And I go in there, and I remember on his whiteboard he had all his goals set up. That's and right. it's very important to write it out. I and mean, it's not cliche. You should write it out. It's not powerful enough to think it. You literally have to write it out. Yeah. And he wrote it out, his goals. And I remember watching as time go by, crossing out a goal. Yeah. It started that. I think it started that like, uh, started at like 100 subscribers because I already had that when I started working with Tom. And then I had like put 1,000, then 2,000, then like 5,000, then 10, yeah. then 20, then like. 50. On the board, you had all yeah. those written out. Like, yeah. All on a whiteboard, and yeah, I was just slowly crossing those out. I think it was, I met you when I had probably a couple thousand subscribers on like a vlog no. channel. Oh, when we met, maybe yeah. Yeah, when we yeah. first met. Right. But then, like, finally, like, collabed on a video with you. I had around like twenty. Twenty five. Twenty five thousand yeah. subscribers. That's how I remember it. Twenty five. Yeah. And uh, the video that we did together. Man, that changed everything. Yeah, you know, and it also was a lesson about it because it didn't work. Oh, yeah, it was. I felt it bad because uh, Tom asked me to um, collab with you and Jim, uh-huh. 
and I've already met you guys and filmed with you guys and for a production wise yeah. with Tom. So you mm -hmm. guys are cool, and I see you guys trying and working and uploading and doing the effort. So yeah, let's collab. And then you and Jim came down, and then when we did yeah, our we video, came up to Cincinnati, right? Yeah, came to Cincinnati, yeah. and when we did our video, Jim's video worked. <laughs> yes. But your video that we did on, on my end had no audio. Right. Jim yes. left the audio off. Or maybe it was me. I don't know. <laughs> we'll blame it on Jim because he's not here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then you, uh, to your credit, came back down to Louisville. Yeah, and... I was in L.A. and you were like, dude, I told you. And you're like, oh, great. And, uh, I'm never going to do this video. And I was like, yeah, now we're going to do it. No, you came to Louisville and you, uh, you met me at Tom's office. Oh, but what I tell you though, I told you. No, you were in like, LA, oh, it's it's for a reason. It's like, for a reason, dude. Yeah, it'll be better when we shoot it the second time. Don't worry. And it ended up, yeah, it ended up being way better the second run through. Way better for whatever reason. Um, and well, that we're in Tom's office. That's yeah, why. we shot it in Tom's office. Yeah. So it was a cool background and it was, a good, it was a good energy. Yeah. And that video ended up, what did it get? Like thirty million views. Yeah, I got a million views in one hour, and we were both like. <laughs> so, like, my video got, like, 100,000 views in the first couple hours, which was, like, crazy for my channel at that point. And your video got, like, a million views or I something I think what happens is, like, right when we uploaded, the YouTube black hole just opened. Yeah. So we got sucked through on the algorithm, then it shut off, and all the other channels' videos just crashed and just, like, waiting for the next. So we, yeah, you got... <laughs> It was like 30 million views on that video on your channel. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, that... we crushed it, and you got, like, a fuck ton Yeah, of... I, I got an insane amount of, like... I think it, it took, my, took my channel from, fuck, like... 250. From 25,000 subscribers up to, like, yeah, 250,000 subscribers. Yeah, that's the definition of, like, a blow up. Yeah. At that time, at least. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I... That's kind of how, like... And, like, I had gotten that initial 25 from Tom's push uh, that I had done collabing with him. And just, you know, I had a couple videos organically pop here and there with How To Magic where I was gaining subscribers. But it was really the push from Tom and the push from your channel that really just sent my channel, like, through the roof to where it was, like, a sustainable living. Yeah, but, 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 the, but it was your content. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so your we you could open the floodgates for somebody, but then it just right. crashes. Yeah, because they have. So your yeah, content to do is with the it. reason why it did so well. Thank and you. Your, your production, your content, your your work ethic, yeah. you know. So you your presentation, all that is what got you through. And that that's like a lesson yeah. that I learned from working with you and Tom was that like. You can give somebody all the pushes in the world, but if they're not actually making any content that's like worth pushing to, like it, it's not going to exactly. do anything for them. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that are like, hey man, I'll help you out. Hey man, let's do this. Hey, let's collab. Yeah. That's cool, but right now I'm just like, I don't want to um, take advantage of that awesome, amazing opportunity. Like, amazing opportunity to have friends that have massive channels that are offering to like collaborate but uh, I'm, I'm not in that space where i'm gonna be like okay well then what am i gonna do after the collaboration yeah yeah for yeah, sure right? i don't want to burn it right it's like a beep, boop. <laughs> a little blip on the radar yeah <laughs> yeah you gotta you have a plan to, yeah. yeah you gotta have a plan a production schedule everything like that so but yeah rest is history um then we've i think the next time we collab is it like Playlist in DC, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Oh, we did a lot of collabs, dude. What are yeah, you talking about? A lot. Yeah. yeah, it was great. We did a um, bunch. But yeah, man. Um, and look at you now. Yeah, Evan the Era how podcast. How to magic and, gone to Evan Era podcast. Yeah. Boom boom. Well, we're still doing how to magic. I know that. You still Rest got assured. It. And but, we got uh, the how to magic TikTok. Yeah, yeah. And we got the how to magic Facebook. Everything going, man. Yeah. You have a prank it up. Prank it up. Prankkits.com. Prankkits.com yeah, yeah. is still going. That's right. It's still going. I did a, I read those TikTok videos is what sends people to that store right now. Nice. Does it work for you for How To Magic? TikTok? Yeah. Um, TikTok's powerful. Some of, yeah, some of our biggest videos on TikTok are just me showing like a like a little magic trick up close. Dude. Like just random, man. It's yeah. crazy. I wonder if I haven't done Instagram re reels. 
Yeah, we haven't have done, you tried it? We've done like four or five reels. And, uh, you know, it just... TikTok right now for my store. And I heard they're coming out with a option where you can attach your store link to the video. Oh, really? So now you can push your traffic to the store, yeah, which is see. amazing. So then all that support uh, comes in way more powerful than versus, uh, like, you know, YouTube ad revenue, for example. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah. And Facebook People, ad yeah. revenue. Yeah. Whew. Or it's like a roller coaster, right? Yeah, it is. Sometimes yeah! Oh, it's like a crime. <laughs> like, oh, I hope. Sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's like, eh. But, you know, it's like, uh, I think Tom said, uh, Mabe, uh, who was our guest last episode, if you haven't seen it, uh, said that, like, uh, it's like sometimes it's, everything's firing on all cylinders, and it's great. Oh, yeah, when yeah. that's firing, you have the whole engine, all the pistons pumping. Mm-hmm. Prankkits.com, yes, sir. They Go over there get, and get your prank toys. Most popular prank is the broken neck bone poppers. The bone poppers. Pop, pop. I sell, I sell kits, so it's like bone poppers with the shock pan. That's like the most orders I get. Bone popper, shock pan. Bone popper, shock pan. It's the same. Like this Actually, insane speaking package. of uh, Playlist DC, I think that was the first oh, time yeah. you ever got me That's... with the shock pan. Oh! You got a lot of uh Oh, I should send you some clips. That was hilarious. You could put it in. Yeah. That'd be cool. That was so funny. Yeah, dude, this guy. You got like rice work. gum, a lot of like Alex wasabi. Yeah, Alex wasabi. That's right. Yeah, uh, I got Loff, Andrew Hales. I got. Oh yeah, he's funny, man. He did. He, God, kid, he did that video recently Pearson, that was hilarious. Kobe Pearson, I think. Yeah, yeah Kobe Pearson. Uh, uh, Andrew Carl. Hales. Shay uh, Carl. I got Shay Carl. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew Hales doing the. I haven't seen a lot of his videos, so I'm like, well, I haven't looked a long time. But yeah. last time I saw, he was doing those interviews with like um, mm. interesting people. Chatting with, yeah. Chatting with, yeah. Yeah. That was good. Really cool. Uh, he did a really funny series of videos recently that were just kind of making fun of the whole. Uh, like ghost exploring. Oh, uh, that's awesome! I could see him uh, doing that. <laughs> Seriously, that is YouTube. funny. You know, he like made fun of like the uh, the that's... hood pranks back in the day. Well, I think one of my favorite videos he did was the one where he did the fake prank and then the guy shoots him at the end. Yes, it was. Yeah, that was so uh, good. stupid pranks TV or whatever he called it. Oh my god. Um. Yeah, it's kind of had that vibe to it. Super funny. Yeah, that guy's funny. Um. Yeah, man. So, uh, what? Uh, what content are you watching now on YouTube? Are you watching anything? I'm not watching anything. Watch on anything? It. I'm, I'm watching um, Unspeakable. I've never seen this video. Well, maybe, maybe because Ava's not into it. Yeah. But I'm sure Ava has shows on YouTube that she's I have into. heard, yeah, that I watch. Uh, yeah, Mariah yeah. Elizabeth uh, is because. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've heard Unspeakable mentioned. I like, like Unspeakable. Uh, Roman's yeah. kids like them, maybe. Yeah, they went, Unspeakable went to his house. Yeah. I yeah. think that was when Roman probably got the most text messages he ever got in life. Really? Because that means not only were like myself, but everybody I can imagine was like, hey, can I bring my kid over? Why is this guy so popular? What's he do? I mean, if I guess if they watch his channel, like, he <coughs> does games. Oh, okay. And challenges. And he's like doing games it right. Like he does gaming? it right. Like playing video games? Yeah, video, uh, Minecraft, I think, is his huh. main, yeah. Okay. And and then they do challenges and they do sketch sketches and and um, experiments. You know he's doing it right. High yeah. energy. Yeah, it's really animated. Excellent production, on time scheduling, uh-huh. always there, never going away. And like you know he started out from the bottom too yeah. to see his team grow and grow. That's the thing. Like your, your team grows. You got to expand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Unspeakable is what I watch the most probably on YouTube right now. Alex is into him. He likes Unspeakable, and then um, we also watch, like, airplane videos or, like, launching cars off cliffs. Yeah. So there's this guy in Alaska. <laughs> every every July 4th, they have a thing where they launch these cars off a cliff, and they collect them. Some of them are police cars. Oh, that's cool. Snowmobiles, vans, and they literally launch it, and it crashes down the hill. So um, you said airplanes. It reminded me of something I wanted to talk about. Uh, so... We've both had the unique experience of like traveling to multiple countries around the world, and uh, in like a short period of time, uh, you did a video back in the day. Uh, what was it called? I don't remember the title of it. Where you and Roman went around the, the yawn world. prank? Yeah, the yawn prank. Um, that was fun. Yeah, hilarious. Um, but and then we did uh, like a magic around the world video, which if you're watching this podcast. Sure, you've seen it. It's uh, 
it's a kind of a unique thing that I think now post COVID uh, is not really. How do you think that's going to work? You think I'm going to go to the airport and I want to travel to Cairo, Egypt, and then and then I want to go from Cairo to Paris, and they're going to say no. I just think like really? you would have to have like a. Oh, they're going to say come on down, but you're not staying unless you could show me a hotel for like nine days. Well, they want to see a negative COVID test result within like. 48 hours of you traveling there. Is that real? Yeah. Do COVID tests come out in 48 hours? Well, you have to have like the result, I guess, within 48 hours of you traveling there. Well, my there. friend, just his dad died of COVID. God bless his soul and rest in peace. And uh, I mean, this is just recent where the funeral hasn't even happened yet. Yeah. And I don't know what I was going to say. I forgot. Well, I mean, I think it's just like, I think that that's a requirement now to travel most places as a as a oh, U.S. citizen. But when he when he is when he he had the test for work, and then it took a week and a half for him to get his results, bro. A oh, week yeah. and a half. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if it's like from when you get the negative result, it has to be forty eight hours. But I know like that is like the requirement that most people are like most countries are requiring now is that you have to show a negative test result within 48 hours or like 24 hours 72 hours something like that so, so the days of traveling like, i think the days of like traveling from country to country like on like a is on pause yeah that's on pause for a while so i just want to yeah because we did our around the world in like 14 days i think yeah 13 days Crazy. or something yeah we just so what was you that? travel around the world when you book your tickets if you book a one-way pass and you uh -huh. go all the way around in the same direction it's cheaper so yeah, that's not what I did. Oh, you did. I, I totally I like scheduled mine completely on my own. Oh. I did not do it all in 14 days. We did it in like two legs, I think. We did like Paris, London. How long did you stay at each place? 2 to 3 days. Yeah, we stayed uh, two nights yeah. and then um and a couple places we stayed one night. Mm -hmm. But at the around the world you, you, I don't know why. I guess it's because of the gas or something. I don't know. But when you buy all your tickets, yeah, you buy them all at once, and you have your date set, and you and each airport you have it booked of where you're going. Or if you're not going to the airport, you catch a bus. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a train, and then you just go to that airport, right? And then when you go in that direction, that one way pass, it was literally like fifty percent cheaper. Wow. Maybe even more. Did you ever uh, have a instance uh, while doing that? Where it was like a, a crunch time thing, like you had to make this flight or this train, or like the the whole rest of the thing was fucked. I was filming with Roman Atwood, so we were like, it's Roman Atwood and Dennis Rohde <laughs> together. We were just like on, we were on time, we were there, we get it done, and we're on. We didn't have no moments of like I don't that I can recall. The only moments we had is like when like we lost a GoPro or something, or like the camel jockey at the pyramids coming to whip me. On the, on the prank that we're doing because we did the water pyramid prank. Yeah. Where I peed on it. Yeah. I peed on the pyramids with the water bottle, and then Hilarious. the jockeys came in and slapped you, you know? So Egypt's a crazy place, isn't it? And then they're, like, so aggressive when it comes to, like, making money. Like, these guys oh, yeah. are out there working. But it was Dude, just when crazy. we first walked out there, like, we had uh, the guide, the fixer that you set us up with, Malak. Oh, yeah, she's awesome. F fantastic. She was so cool, man. Um, thank you again for that. Uh, yeah. So we were with her, but, like, when we bought the tickets to go into the pyramid complex and, like, walked out of it, there's all these dudes who are, like, trying to get money Yeah, they're money jumping on your car. Yeah, they're, like, this dude immediately walks up to us, and we think he, like, works for the, like, pyramid like yeah the state and uh he's like come with me come with oh, me oh no he's just a regular dude. no he's just a dude yeah. like <laughs> who wanted to take like asked to like get our phones and like take pictures of us with our phones and then like charge us like 20 bucks for it and we were like once we put it together like what was happening the hustle like, man the fuck you gotta hustle. and i gave the dude money because i yeah. just like felt bad like, that's why this, I did how this dude supports his family like you know so it is what it is but yeah that was uh it's a unique experience in Egypt. It really is because it's such a surreal place to be. It, it feels like you're in a movie. Um, Let me ask you. Yeah. On the pyramids, uh -huh. did they use a hammer and a chisel to make them? That's a deep conversation. I have no idea. Well, I mean, you were there. It's not like you watched it on TV. 
you touched the stones. Yeah. You climbed um, on top of it. You 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 were up close and personal. We touched it, dude. We have a friend that climbed it, okay? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. what is your opinion? And, and you watching it too, but what's your opinion? You touching it, did man hammer and chisel those things and move them on logs and stack them? What, what is your opinion that you were there? I would say yes, simply because, you know, the... The other, the alternative answer, I have no like explanation for how exactly that happened. I'm saying man did it with a hammer and chisel is what I'm asking you. Do you? I didn't say if it's not man made. Okay. I'm asking you. You're going there. I'm asking um, you. I would say. Did, were they made? Did man make it with so hammer I would say and chisel? Some of it. Some of it probably. Yeah. Some of it made with a hammer and chisel, and then some of it. Uh, inward. Maybe the guys that probably had like. Bang off all the mold and mildew and all the stuff that was like filthy. Maybe they had a hammer and chisel and cleaned it off for the guys that were probably using laser beams. Because <laughs> those things were straight. Straight as you can, po- I mean, as if I. Yeah. It was so smooth. As if it was laser cut. Yeah. It was more water or something, stream of energy. Yeah, I don't that know. That blasted right through Have you that heard like about the, butter. Uh, the Coral Be- Castle in Florida. What is it? Edward Leedskelden. It's um, I think that's how his name is pronounced. So it's a fascinating guy uh, in Florida, and uh, I might not be doing the story justice, but he, the thing still exists today. It's called the Coral Castle, and it's uh, these giant pieces of coral that weigh like multiple tons, and uh, they're that he assembled almost like a Stonehenge type thing. Under the water? And, no, it, this is above. This is okay. on land, um, and like he harvested these pieces of coral like from the ground, and like no one knows how he did it. He uh, like did it by himself in like a matter of like an overnight. Where oh, that's impossible. He was moving them from. He claimed that he had figured out how the Egyptians built the pyramids. Oh, okay. um, that he like basically figured out resonance. Like he was. Like, like sound resonance? Yeah, like rap like everything has a frequency. To right. He was like wrapping a coil around that makes sense this coral. Me. He had figured out whatever frequency the coral was to where when it resonated this coil at this frequency, the coral would become like almost weightless to where He's he could like it. move it by himself. Um that's what the theory is, but nobody like actually ever saw him doing it because he did it under the cover of night and like he would move like a these I think he had to move it one time. Well, I don't the understand why he, he moved couldn't... all of these pieces like Overnight, like over fifty miles, like by himself. Yeah, but it would be so crazy. easy to prove that if he just did it once with right. the cameras on. But it, I don't know why he didn't. Um, he wrote two books, uh, and one of them is called <laughs> "A Book in Every Home," and it's said that like it's a cipher, and that like his secrets are like hidden in this book, and like. If you relay every other word or whatever, how whatever the code is, like you can somehow decipher whatever you know he had hidden in this book. But I don't know if that's true or not. Of course um, not. It's probably. just like it's just like when somebody does a TikTok video and they're like, "If you want to see part two, you know, right?" And but then like there's never dude, a part two. It's this just dude like, like balanced like a multiple ton piece of coral like on uh, like a swivel thing, like on a bearing. Did anybody see it? To where, yeah, it still exists today. But like oh. what happened was like in, I think, Hurricane Katrina, it got like knocked off of its like perfectly centered balance to where the whole like Army Corps of Engineers like could not get it as perfectly balanced as he had it. Well, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's, you it's do super... magic, so I don't believe anything. Right, uh, like it's like it's it's just. Uh, I don't know to circle back all that to say I really don't know if those stones at the pyramids were cut by dudes with chisels. It seems more likely that it was some more sophisticated means of stone cutting. Yeah, like that's where the wire thing would make sense, I yeah. guess. But like, there's something that was used, some type of technology, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. that made those things. There's no way. Yeah. That these dudes getting whipped yeah. as slaves built those. They had to be smart people that Who were not that getting whipped. That? They Who were not getting the, whipped. Is it There's Louis no C.K. that has the, the bit about like uh, 
if you throw enough like human suffering at something. Oh yeah, that is Lucy. Yeah, yeah. What is that thing? <laughs> it's I think he's oh, talking yeah. about Egypt. <laughs> the it's like you can build anything and just throw enough human suffering at it. That is sadly true almost. Kind of. I I don't know. Um but they are like just crazy yeah. to look at. Yeah, dude, and they're massive and they're yes. smooth and also they're straight weird edged. the location of them cuz most people who haven't been to Egypt envision them just being out in the middle of the desert and they are but they're right next door to the city yeah they're like, right across the street from the trash piles <laughs> there's literally uh, uh, you know on the highway when you're driving down I the was highway, not going to um when you drive down the highway yeah in the middle they have grass or center concrete beams but yeah. in egypt it is garbage yeah i guess everybody comes out front and just walks across the street and throws their garbage in there yeah. and maybe somebody comes and cleans those up our fixer like asked us not to like put that in our video, so I oh. didn't. Uh... Yeah, it's probably good for her. No, I don't think we put it in our video either. Yeah. Oh no, I don't remember. But yeah, it is. It Egypt does have a sanitation problem. I think for our, sure. there's trash everywhere. On Serial Pranksters, the channel Roman and I did when we traveled that trip, um, the Egypt trip is in there. Actually, I think we did show all that, but nobody told us not, so we haven't even met her. Right. Yet. Yeah. But yeah, right across the street. That's why all the pictures are only one way on the Egypt. You'll never see photos unless they Photoshop it, I guess. The backdrop on the other city, yeah. Yeah. But you won't see it. It's like Huge literally across the street. Yeah. I wonder what the pharaohs would think. They'd be like coming down their pyramid, like tomb, open it up, oh, come outside and look, and it's just like what trash is that? around what is a fucking this? Pizza Hut, like right across from the pyramids. I wonder what he would do. KFC. <laughs> He'd be down there eating some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> there really is a Pizza Hut right across. There's from a chicken him. god. One of the best views of the pyramids is at the Pizza Hut across from the pyramids. Eat your stuffed crust pizza with the pharaohs. Have you been to... Uh... Egypt was the best food ever because we came out of Bangkok straight to Egypt, I think. Uh -huh. And I was never so happy to get to good food because egypt food was just like just like american food but i feel like better for some reason yeah probably didn't have a bunch of fake stuff in it we but... had a different egyptian food experience than you did obviously oh yours wasn't good. we had an amazing i had a weird duality okay so when we were in egypt we we ate with malak and like just to put it in context we got to egypt by way of jordan and we Malak's did... a great tour guide, by the way. She's Fantastic. The best. Malak. Um, yeah. Um, which I... Because her email signature was Hakuna Matata. I thought maybe her name was Hakuna Matata. Because <laughs> I'm a retarded American <laughs> idiot. We were only supposed to spend one day in Egypt. Um, what ends up happening is we give that goose to that Egyptian family, which I'm sure they immediately took it and like slaughtered it and ate it for dinner that night. Um uh so then it never rains in egypt right right like very rarely is what malak told me like maybe rained. once every six months and it pours rain like it pours down rain is it like flooding the streets kind of rain like insane flooding the streets <laughs> like to the point where oh we're not God. even filming it because we're so alarmed <sighs> that we might die because yeah. because the water is getting so high, like first off, we try to leave for the airport like f four or five hours before right. the flight, because we're like a good hour from the airport. Like the pyramids are a ways from the Egyptian airport, and uh, we knew that it was a nightmare getting into Egypt. Um, so busy, so many yeah, people. Yeah, a lot. So uh, many people lot on top on. of people. You look out there <clears throat> and it's a sea. As far as your eye can see. Yeah. Endless, infinite feeling of just 10 by like 20 stacks. Yeah. Or 20 by 20 stacks or something. Yeah. Just straight up. And each one of those stacks is somebody that lives there. And yeah. the roads are only donkey cart wide. Yes. So donkey Crazy carts. traffic too. It's like if you got if right. you got kidnapped or like jacked, and they were like he's somewhere in there. So the the first day we yeah. were there, we like ate falafel with uh, Malak. Yeah. Like from a street vendor, it was amazing. 
And then yeah, the, the second, yeah, it was great. The second night we were there, like we the streets flood, so we miss our flight, right? Um, and we don't make it to the airport on time. We're like in this little van. Oh no! Uh, this dude trying to get us to the airport on the, the way out. The, yeah, the streets are flooding. We're trying to get there. We miss the flight because oh, the no. traffic's too crazy. So we miss the flight, um, and we have to spend another night in Cairo. Um, See, I didn't stay there. So we're we're missing. Um, we're missing like you know a, another day in China. That oh, okay. it cuts into our time in That's China. That's not good. Yeah, bummer. Um, so we spent another day in Cairo, and we stay at uh, I think it was a Hilton property, or maybe it was Marriott. But uh, we get there, and by this point, we had only eaten like that falafel, and then we got some like non bread from a vendor. And uh, we had like uh, we had not eaten any dinner uh, or breakfast, so we had like just hungry. that light lunch, super hungry. Uh, and we and we had been like shooting all day, like running, like since five a.m. with no sleep, just Get in my belly. super hungry. So we order room service at like it's one a.m. at this point. Oh no, um, not good. Oh, they never turn off over there. No, no, it, it was available. Yeah, but like I ordered like. I wanted protein, so I just ordered, like, a uh, chicken, like a roasted chicken, and, like, chicken nugget appetizer, because um, I had my doubts about eating chicken in Africa. Right. Uh, no offense to any African uh, viewers out there, but I, d I just know that, like, chicken spoils very easily, and I don't know what refrigeration is like over there versus... Is that something that you came up with? In more developed countries, is that something you came up with, or is that something that was recommended? I would say I probably read it online. Okay. I did quite a bit of research for traveling. Uh, so no chicken. No, I, I I definitely like ate chicken. Like no, that no, was my in Africa, no African, no chicken in Africa. No, I don't know that that's necessarily true. I'm just but saying you didn't. I ordered it. Oh, you ordered it. Yes, even though you were recommended not to do it. Uh, I Your think I I ordered otherwise. like multiple types of chicken in hopes that like chicken nuggets like. That's going to be, like, some sort of, like, spongy, like, white, like, processed chicken that, like, is going to be deep fried and pro <laughs> probably safe, you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's not not going to be uh, potentially, like... Oh, man, you know what? I think I was a spongy chicken that's deep fried and totally processed that's way safer. I'm just saying it probably had a better chance of being not, like, rancid chicken oh, meat. Okay, okay, you know what okay, I'm saying? Because yeah. it's probably kept frozen. Right. Uh, right that was my okay. thought process anyway. So anyway, we get it from the room service and I bite into these chicken nuggets and it's like gray. Like the chicken meat is gray. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that is not normal. Did you and, spit it out? Or did oh you? yeah, of course I spit it out. <laughs> uh, and then like, like... Did you chew it and notice it? Like, No, like... I'm like taking the first bite and like, I'm particular about food. Like, I bit into it like looked at the meat, <laughs> realized it was yet? gray. I'm like chewing the piece and then like spit it out. So then I, we break into the roast chicken that we ordered, right? <laughs> what color was this roast chicken? Not what it should have been. Oh. Like this was like a pigeon or something that was not a chicken. So it was like small. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, but it may not. It may be a real chicken. Have, yes, exactly. It's that not was an American what, chicken. It's yes, stuffed that is with what, steroids and all yes, this crap. That is what we discussed is that, yeah, this is probably like a real chicken. Yeah. Not like an American KFC chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Like no head, no bones. But then the following day, we ate at like the Mexican restaurant in the hotel, and Eric got like a chicken burrito and. Uh, like, it didn't say on the menu that it had, like, vegetables in it. And, of course, he's, like, an American piece of shit and just doesn't eat any ve vegetables whatsoever. So, like, when it comes with, like, bell peppers in it, he's like, oh, I can't eat this. And then just asked for, like, plain chicken and rice. And they brought him the most beautifully grilled piece of chicken that I've ever seen. They really don't want and I was that. like, I want that. Where has that been? Like, where was that last night with the fucking room service? What I was saying is in Bangkok, when, when they were driving, it's like watching a river flow. Yeah. And they're on their motorcycles. And they're cruising, right? And they're like, no speed limits. Everyone's honking their horn. Dudes have, drivers have, like, stacks of boxes stacked higher than I've they are. I've seen this in videos. Yeah, yeah, and they're strapped. And just driving along like it's normal. And it is normal for them, right? Yeah. And then you, I look over, and there's girls sitting on the back of these motorcycles, 
both legs on one side, like yeah. crossover, like yeah. you're sitting in an office chair. Did see that in Egypt. And babies strapped. Crazy. Yeah. I remember in Kuwait. An entire family on a motorcycle. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember in Kuwait, I saw, um, when I was driving down the highway in Kuwait, there was... You've been to Kuwait? Yeah, there was a station wagon. Was this wagon. when you were in the military? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I'm driving in Kuwait in a dually pickup truck, and I'm like cruising along. Like, there's no speed limits. You're going as fast as you want. You see cars on the side of the road charred from accidents. I saw a dude on a motorcycle. Were you in the army? Is that where you were? Yeah, yeah, army. I saw a dude on a motorcycle, like, hit the back of a truck, so, like, his helmet was in the stuck there it was crazy anyway so i'm driving real fast i look over and there's like a station wagon and this dude's got babies like kids like toddlers crawling two of them one's crawling on the front dashboard and the other one was in the back of the station wagon like standing up like hanging out like a playpen yeah but we're going like 80 on the highway jesus i'm like what the heck that's great or (laughs) or i'm driving i pull up next to the car and i turn and look dude's got a falcon on the center console, just chilling. And I was like, is that an ornament? And then the falcon's head turned like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, it's a real falcon in that car. This was in Kuwait? In Kuwait. Wow. That was so cool. That's cool. Yeah, man. In Kuwait, the people who drive up to the restaurant, yeah. the Kuwaitis, uh-huh. they have all the money. Yeah. They drive up to the restaurant, and there's people that oh, are not from Kuwait. Oh, these dudes who come up with like a, a cheetah in the car and shit like that? Is that what no, I oh, I just saw the Falcons. I don't know. I'm sure okay. they have cheetahs, too. But the people come up to the restaurant, and then there's other people that live there that's not in Kuwait. Kuwait has all these rules. Yeah. But like all the Kuwaitis are the ones that have the money. The people that work there are not Kuwaiti. They're like other people from other countries that uh-huh. are poor working. So they pull up to the grocery store, and they just tell the person what they want. And then they sit, and the person runs inside like before the app. You know, and they run inside yeah. and they grab all their groceries and come back out and load it up. That's like their normal grocery. Wow. And, and you can't party or do anything there. So the real Kuwaitis have boats. They go out to the boats and they party. But like, talk about not having any stress release. Like you come from a poor country, you get paid nothing. You're basically slaving away yeah. at, at this life that just sucks. And then you have no way to legally de-stress. Yeah. Through like some kind of form of alcohol or something. Yeah, alcohol is illegal, isn't it? Yeah, over there. But then all the Kuwaitis, they just go out to the ocean and they just party in, on the boats and they come really? back because it's not legal. Oh, because it's like you're on international waters and you're not technically yeah. in Kuwait. Right. What's your, uh, what's your favorite place you've ever been traveling? Like what's the place you most want to go back to? I guess that's a good I way mean, to kind of figure out what the favorite is. Like where do you most want to go back to? All of it. That's kind all of a the blanket people, answer. I know, but all of it. But I, 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 I guess the most favorite. What's one instance? Paris that like, was awesome, man. Yeah, cool place. You were there. Yeah. That bridge, you know, that bridge that goes to the uh, uh, Eiffel Tower. Yeah. I'd go up on the edge of it because, like, there's a huge ledge on the side. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm done with this life. I go, ah! And I just like hit the <laughs> ledge and I like duck, and then all the people run over and they look down, and I'm like, ah, I love this life, you know. Wow. And they're like, oh, and they're all foreign, so everybody has a different accent, and they're all talking <laughs> in different languages, and they're like, little, little, little. It was cool. Par- yeah, and Paris, Paris is awesome. Paris is a fantastic place. But, I, uh, what about you? I filmed a fantastic proposal video in Paris, like impromptu. This proposal? guy. Yeah, like so. Oh, for somebody. Yes. I've done that before in really? life. That's so funny, like. I did the same thing for somebody. That's cool, but you did it in Paris. I did. Like, in front of the Eiffel Tower, this guy asked Veronica to take a, po- a picture for Oh, her. okay. And, uh, like, of him and his chick. Yeah. And um, V was like, oh, I'm not really good with cameras. And here. I was like, here, let me take it. Yeah. And, like, I... I'll take it from here. <laughs> and uh, he's, like says to me like we took a video instead oh like, like kind of like, like covertly and i'm like oh yeah got you so i video it <clears throat> and uh he like gets down on one knee and i'm like coming in like for like, the uh... fucking angle like getting it really good and like you couldn't have given your phone to a better like you found the exact right motherfucker of all the people on this bridge right now that to you could have this. given your phone yeah. to, like, you handed it to the right person, like, someone who does video for a living. So I get, like, a beautiful shot with, like, the tower in the How background. Cool. Him yeah. down on me, like, just perfect. Like, I wish I would have been, like, please, like, send me this video so I have it for my own, like, personal 
Maybe it's out there. It is somewhere. If this, if you happen to be listening to this, please send me that video, guy in France, who I'm pretty sure was American. I really don't know. Dude, it'd be funny if you actually got like every single wedding proposal video. <laughs> in Apple pa- is this you? Is this it? But yeah, has to be filmed with a cell phone horizontal. Yeah, it was, was actually it? it was vertical. Vertical. It was vertical. Yep. So now you can't even put it on any social media, right? Because then it'd be like this big. It'd be good on TikTok, <laughs> Instagram Reels. I'm teasing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. Dude, so uh, speaking of favorite places, though, I, I as you were talking, I did th- come up with one. Yeah. And that would be Moscow. I've not been to Russia. And if you're going to go to Russia, you should go with Vitaly Zodovetsky as your Russian guide. I would guide. imagine so. So my Egyptian guide to you was Malak. Yeah. My Russian guide to you would be Vitaly. Well, actually, it was uh, that Goldstein kid. I don't know. He, he was the one that actually was the guide. So Vitaly wasn't really the guide. It was him. Vitaly and I were along for the ride. Uh-huh. But yeah, Moscow was basically like, felt like America. Yeah. But Russian, I don't know if that makes sense, but it was uh, the vibe I got. Yeah. Walking around town, it was like America 1990. Huh. 1992, maybe. That's interesting. That's the vibe. I really want to go to Russia. Man, go to Moscow. Everyone else tells me, yeah, anywhere else it sucks. I mean, I don't know. I've yeah. never been. But that's what they were telling me. Like, Moscow's a fun one. Yeah. I've. Uh... And I guess, was there like, it was St. Petersburg, maybe? I yeah. don't know. Petersburg, Russia, yeah. But I heard that one's like more serious. Hmm. Moscow is to go, like if you want to go visit Russia and hang out and have fun, yeah. you go to Moscow apparently. Cool nightlife, stuff like that. We saw Lindsay Lohan. Really? We talked to her. In Moscow? In Moscow on, on top of the Ritz Hotel. We were sitting there hanging out with my buddy Eric Walterman. Yeah, I know. And uh, we were hanging out and then I guess she was there too, waiting on her boyfriend at the time or whatever. Huh. It's so funny. Cause was then, she super famous at the time? No, this is like, I mean, I don't know how famous she was. She's always been famous, apparently. Right, yeah. I don't know what level she was at that time. She was just the hanging out daughter, there. Yeah. And, um, and and uh, yeah, it was cool. I don't know. That's cool. It's funny that I saw her in Russia, and then when I did that homeless video, her dad is the one that called up to have Aaron come down there. So her dad pretty much got Aaron down to Florida. Really? And then when I walked in, her, her dad was like, pretend. I don't know if it was a fake thing. I don't know, but like, you know, there's this little process built up to go meet this guy. It's yeah. cool, I understand, I get it. And then like, I go in, and as I walk in, he's like on the phone. No, Lindsay, okay, Lindsay, fine. The credit card number, I just, you can't get another credit card. Okay, 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 the credit number, card number is 544, whatever, right? Expiration date. Okay, all right, okay. Hey, how's it going? I'm like, dude, th- you, really? Like, that's what I'm walking in on? I don't know if that was real or not. Meeting or... Billy Ray Cyrus? No, Lindsay Lohan's dad, not Miley Cyrus. Oh, who are we talking Lindsay about? Lohan. Who is Lindsay <laughs> I thought Lohan? I said Miley Cyrus. I did. Why do you, why? Boy, that would be cool. I mixed those two up. Who is Lindsay Lohan's dad? I don't know his name. Oh. Something Mr. <laughs> Lohan. Okay. But no, he like... <laughs> I thought he was... He is somebody. Like, he's like a... I, I don't know how to describe him. He's like one of them Hollywood dads, basically. Got it. Right? So you okay. hear those stories about Hollywood dads. Like, that's Mr. Lohan. I can't be the only one who constantly confuses Lindsay Lohan and Miley Cyrus. I, I don't think you're the only one that confuses I don't think, because Hannah Montana and Lindsay Lohan, I think, is where the confusion comes in for me. You can keep trying. I don't know. That's what, that's, I think Hannah that's Hannah Montana and Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, the alliteration and, like, the rhyming of the name, I think. Hannah Montana does not rhyme with Lindsay Lohan. No, Hannah Montana rhymes with each other. And then the alliteration oh, Lindsay of Lohan. Lindsay Lohan, the L oh. and the L, I think is what confuses okay. me to make them they're like the same person in my mind. Anyway, um, she was cool. Her dad was weird. Lindsay Lohan, what has she done? She did a movie. I have no movies? idea. She used to get in trouble for like being... <laughs> Just being famous? <laughs> no, I, I guess like uh, from what I know of, she, I only saw articles of like her producers and directors frustrated with her behavior on set yeah those okay. would be like the stories yes i do recall that and and it doesn't help that you know your family probably also is like adding extra weight on whatever it is you're trying to do and for move sure. forward yeah nothing worse than like finding your stride and then all of a sudden you got like haters in the circle that's close to you yeah throwing their grappling hooks trying to like bring it down yep slows you down um, but so, if you shine bright, that shit, that'll so evaporate. So you met Miley Cyrus. 
No. Oh, no I'm kidding. You I met wish. Lindsay Lohan on the roof of... Uh... Miley Cyrus would probably be so cool. <clears throat> I yeah, she was on really uh, cool. she was on Rogan's podcast just the other day. Okay, yeah, I don't know. It's I interesting. That. Um, but yeah, uh, I heard so... it got a lot of hate actually. Really? Because they were like, okay, yes, I, I saw somewhere somebody was complaining, like one of the channels, about or maybe it's Twitter. I guess R- Rogan's podcasts were censored on Spotify. Yeah, like some of the most controversial ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were like, and then you have Miley Cyrus on. And blah blah blah. Are you gonna have it? I'm like, dude. First of all, Rogan has almost everybody on Earth on. Yeah. And second off, it's Spotify or spot. Yeah, Spotify. Yeah. Some music, so it's totally appropriate for his first guest on his Spotify channel to be a musician. Right. And why not go with one of the most popular, relevant musicians? Yeah. I don't know relevance, but like uh, popular yeah. and people know Miley Cyrus. Yeah. That seems normal to me. I don't see a problem. Yeah, I think the. I think on Philip DeFranco's show, I think he addressed that it was confusion because a lot of the a lot of the episodes were excluded, but like yeah, the most controversial ones. Some of the most controversial ones, but like now, like days later, it's updated and there's more because there's like fifteen hundred episodes that are coming over. They probably went in there and cut it, and they probably did that on purpose. Like, well, let's upload these today and. Let them process, and we'll push these off to the next day. Yeah, so, like, they're slowly going to all be on there, but they're just not all on at once, I right. think, is what it is. So I don't know, though, bro. I don't know, though, bro. <laughs> I can all... Think about it. You're Spotify, dude. You're not a uh, YouTuber that's uploading a video in your yeah. barn in the yeah. backyard in Kentucky. Which I could also see. You can just go like this. Click. I could see it Boom, being Boom, they're done. all there. I could see it being done for controversy. Right. You know. Yeah. Just on purpose. Exactly. Just like talk about it. I don't know though, bro. I don't know though, bro. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I want to be on Rogan's podcast. That'd be so cool. Yeah, man. That'd be... I want to see if... uh, I know two people that have been on his podcast. Matt Brown, UFC fighter. Yeah. Daniel Strauss, Bellator fighter. Both of my friends. Both of them hang out with. Both of them... Uh, I've never fought with Matt Brown, like, sparring and working out, but, like, I've watched him. Yeah. And then Daniel, yeah, he's my dude. So that's cool. So uh, that reminds me, you were in the military, you were in the Army. Yeah, Fit Ops, actually, now you bring that up, Fit Ops is actually a, if you know a veteran, yeah. let them know about FitOps.com because Fit Ops will, um, you go ahead and apply. I did it. I applied. I interviewed for it. Out of fifteen hundred applicants for that one, I got picked out of thirty six. And they do. They're gonna. They do a lot of interviews. And what they do is they take veterans. All expenses paid. John Cena is a, um, a sponsor for it. Performix is a sponsor for it. And what they do is they fund flights for those veterans to go to a location that they've created. And there's like thirty six veterans there. It's awesome experience for a veteran. And not only do we work on like um, becoming a personal trainer together, mm-hmm. we also just kind of build back on that camaraderie and help other veterans. And, and, uh, and they have special guests come in and talk to us about business and how to grow your personal training platforms and how to grow a business. All these uh, individuals that are proven successful mm-hmm. that come in and volunteer and come in and like, meet you and stuff like that. So John Cena was there with us the whole time. That's awesome. Well, for three days. I got him with my bone poppers. And he loved it. And it was so cool to see John Cena's big hands, dude. Huge. Yeah. His arms are like my legs. And and then he takes the bone popper and he's trying to figure out how to use it. And he just see I see him in the corner of the room. He just like pulls it out and he goes, <laughs> you know. That was awesome. That's fantastic. But yeah, fitops.com. You gotta if you're a veteran, you gotta look it up because you can be eligible. I mean, you are eligible if you're a veteran with uh honorable discharge uh-huh. then you can go become a personal trainer that was my goal my goal is become a personal trainer and train kids coming out of like medical um post recovery you know so if they had yeah. chemotherapy for a few years like my son or whatever uh-huh. your bones deteriorate your muscles deteriorate your movement your flexibility your everything like deteriorates yeah. throughout it and that's why it's very important to keep a positive mind for any kind of illness right sure and uh, so I thought I could, like, help these kids get strong. So then yeah. I went and got a uh, senior citizen s- certification mm-hmm. to go work at L.A. Fitness because I was like, all these grandparents have kids, grandkids. I'm going to build my rapport, and then COVID happened. Yeah. 
Bummer. And all the gyms shut down. So I have Piley, that puppet I created. Piley yeah. was going to be the love Piley, the uh, personal trainer. But yeah, FitOps is awesome. And if you're a veteran, yeah. you gotta look up FitOps. If you know a veteran, you gotta look up FitOps. I'm giving them a massive plug because they're the yeah. best. Fantastic. Yeah, dude, it's free. Yeah, that's sixteen awesome. days though. You gotta go sixteen days. Yeah, I remember you were away for uh, yeah, 16. solid like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, dude, and they're and they paid for everything. They get a cert personal certification. You, now cool. you get like exclusive like membership to like you know being in on the in. They let you know all these cool things. It was a tremendous opportunity, and uh, these people are starting new businesses like per, as personal trainers. That's great. Yeah, dude. Yeah, a lot of CBFO. opportunities. Yeah, a lot of opportunities for our veterans out there. It's great. Yeah, I love it. So you served in the army for how many years? Ten. Ten years. Wow, yeah, dude. I didn't realize it was that long. It's fantastic. Yeah, man. Right when I got out of high school, right before, and then I signed up July, and then uh, September 11th happened before I even went to basic. Wow. I went to basic in April, and at basic training, they're like, this is fresh 9-11, so this is 2002, you know? No way. And they're like, I signed up in 2001, eight months later, I go to basic, and they're like, you're going to die, we're going to war, you mother <laughs> you piece of shit, let's go, you weak mother come here, teeth. They call I me call teeth. you teeth because <laughs> you have big teeth. I always smile and come oh, here, teeth. Oh, fucking funny. And I would do these impersonations, and these drill sergeants saw me doing it. So then uh, they had me doing impersonations to the drill sergeant, and it was like the worst thing because I could do a funny demis- impersonation and make fun of them. But then as soon as it's done and everyone's laughing, the guy that they had me do the impersonation comes down, and like I'm doing push ups and sit ups and pull ups and all this, and everyone's Natural. laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Basic training was awesome. Yeah. There was like 38 of us, and there were only uh, 14 of us graduated. And then there was 36 in our graduating class, because if you go in, it's 16 weeks. You go in, and if you hurt your leg, they don't send you home. They send you to go heal. Mm. And whenever you're ready to go, they go to the next class that's going through, uh. and they drop you in when you dropped out. Right. So you're getting so there's guys no escape. who didn't necessarily start with you. Right. And I had a guy that fell on purpose to break his leg, thinking he would get him out. <laughs> oh, wow. And then he ended up having to re- heal. A broken leg takes months. Yeah. Right? Weeks. So you're just like living on base for that whole time? Yeah. And like a, you have roommates and stuff. Jeez. I remember like people were getting recycled out. So you'd come in there, you're a new guy. I'm like, oh, man, that's a four-week bed right there. Be careful. Last guy was on that one for four weeks. You know? And then like. <laughs> Uh, people got broke their legs on purpose, try to get out, but they don't. They don't send you home. There's no way home. Yeah. The fastest way is to graduate. We even had a guy that left when we went on like our so what, two day. What, what was like your mandatory? Like, what did you start having to do? Like, what was the initial amount of time that you had to be in? Was it ten years? Oh no, I did. Um, it's called a two by six. So your six year contract yeah and then there's two every contract whether someone's in for two years four years six years eight years every contract's eight years uh-huh. and then what happens is you can do two years active duty four years six years right or eight yeah. and then if you did two years right then for six years you're on a list they can call you back so i just did the full eight gotcha i was like i don't want to be on a list i saw all these people coming back from ripped out of their jobs their life their family they created and the uncle sam comes in and says you're coming that's like the worst so i just stayed eight years and then i re-enlisted for two and then i bounced gotcha yeah the soldiers were like all right man look you got no you're not married oh no you don't have any kids you got your college degree yeah go chase your dreams army's always going to be there that was the uh speech so you got your degree internet marketing Yep. Really? So while you were in the military? Yeah, while well, I was in the degree? military, I got a bachelor's in internet marketing, and then all of that made sense when I stumbled into YouTube. Yeah. It just made sense uh, how to share your video with yeah. strategy. And, uh, and so that was cool uh, to apply those lessons directly on a brand new platform and to watch the platform change like so drastically. Yeah. Like I totally see where it's at now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, internet marketing. Interesting. I didn't know that you had a degree in internet marketing. Yep. So you're actually like qualified to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I, I basically just took a massive holiday for the family. Yeah. You know, it's more important to, 
uh, like in that songs that you wrote those songs, right? Yeah. It's a family's loyalty, right? So you're loyal yeah. to your family and stuff like that. And so that's where the most value in life is, is to your family. Yeah. And like you said in that song, getting rich is easy. Yeah. Staying rich is hard. Yes. Right? True. And so it's like, okay, I'm rich in family and I'm rich in life and I'm just totally feel so rich. So yeah. even though no matter what's happening with um, the ebbs and flow of life, as long as you yeah. can maintain that mindset that everything's like... Abundance. You're doing it, yeah, in abundance, yeah. and you're doing it right, and you're writing your goals down and stuff. Because Alex, my kid, is like super. Yeah, he's nonstop, action packed. You know that. More, nothing more important than that, you know. Yeah, nothing more important than that. He asked me, yeah, all these questions. He's great. Good. Yeah, dude, I'm super excited. Yeah. I think he's gonna do. We played. I don't want to say, it, but yeah, he's great, dude. <laughs> he's awesome. Um. Yeah. So I uh I want to take like big like uh detour or not detour I guess. Uh, departure from what we're talking about. I have this crazy theory that I came up with the other day about acting. So you've uh, you've done some acting. Yeah, commercials. Uh, yeah, commercials, stuff like that. I was just showing Alex my commercials. He asked me. Really? He, we're sitting there. He goes, Dad, you know John Cena. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, Dad, have you ever done a video with The Rock? <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't do a video with The Rock, but I did a video on his channel. Yeah, I remember and he's that. like, you did a rock on, you did a video on The Rock's channel? Can I see it? And I'm like, yeah. And I show him the video, and he's just like, that's awesome. <laughs> like, he loves it. So we were watching old commercials, too, I found. Yeah. And he was just laughing. I don't know what he's thinking. Right, yeah. But he loved it. But uh, I had yeah. hair and everything, you know? Really? We got big hair and stuff, and he's just What like, commercials did you do? I did, like, a, a Ohio or a Indiana Lottery. A, really? A Value City commercial. That's great. And then I did... um speedway like a commercial and print that's awesome and then um i don't know some like little small ones that's but great. yeah just look, i remember we were doing our auditions you go into a cattle call and like you're sitting there and you're waiting to go up to do your little thing to see yeah. if you're gonna get picked and i remember sitting there in the lobby trying to talk to people I'm like hey man what's how long you've been doing this what commercial have you done da, da, da. and he's like I have, uh, he's like three years or something like that and i'm like cool what, what commercials have you done and he's like i haven't gotten one yet I was thinking, dang, dude, this dude is like in it. He yeah. and he's, he's coming, dedicated. Dedicated. I'm gonna get one. I wanted to tell him, like, go to like West, like get out of Cincinnati. You probably have more as right. much as you're auditioning. You might as you know how long you do it. You probably get yeah. one somewhere. Jesus. Cincinnati is a very um, specific, specific. Well, I had this theory about acting. Um, so there's, in order to like get on board with this theory, you have to understand the other theory that it's kind of based on. Uh, so this is kind of like a crazy. Uh, thought, but um, <clears throat> I just want to get your opinion on it. So, like the idea that all uh, possibilities are existing um, simultaneously. Hang on, hold that thought for one second. My kid calling me. Hey, Dad, I just went tubing. Oh, cool. I'm in the middle of shooting a podcast right now. Uh, What's up, I you YouTuber? You're a YouTuber. You're yeah. YouTubing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks fun. That's nice. Yeah. You guys having fun out there? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, let me call you once we're done. Okay. All right, love you. Hey, we're going to go surfing. Yeah, we're going to go surfing. All right, have fun, be careful. Bye. That's awesome, dude. There's no more better feeling, dude. Yeah. Than being a dad. Mm -hmm. Best thing in the damn world. I know. It's like, yeah. It's, it's such... a little you. Yeah. It's and you weird, have the ability to influence yeah. this human to become better than you, hopefully. Yes. It's like uh, my friend Jay Sankey said, it's like your heart uh, just jumps, jumped out of your chest and is now just <sighs> walking around out in the world. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. He's a poetic man. Uh, shout out to Jay Sankey. Um, I forgot what we were talking about right before Ava called. I don't even remember either. Um, I have to run, <laughs> you run said this is going to throw you off the path that you're talking about your idea oh. for acting. Yes. Okay. Got it. Uh, so we're back. Um, so the idea being that um, all possibilities exist simultaneously, right? Okay. Next to each other and that like 
being it's the universe is vast and never ending like there is another planet exactly like earth there's an alternate reality where there's another dennis doing this exact same podcast right now but he has you hair believe that's possible yeah I, absolutely well i mean absolutely it, it stands to reason that it absolutely is true because if the universe is as vast as we think it is then that absolutely has to be true if it's never ending if it's infinite if we have no grasp of how big it is because it's forever expanding. But I thought Mother Nature was pretty smart. Like, if you just let life run in, uninterrupted, it, yeah. it has a beautiful flow. Sure. But when you start taking invasive species and man-made stuff, that's when we start alternating these situations, right? Yeah. So that being said, if, if, if the creator of life uh-huh. and nature of way life is made uninterrupted... Yeah. Then how is it possible that it would be so inefficient creating the same exact thing over and over and over? Well, I think if life just left unattended to do whatever it does, like maybe it manifests in the same way every time, just with slight variations, you know? Where you, the representation of you around what you're whatever year you were born, like through this time period or what, a, you know, time is an illusion as well. It's like a creation of man. So uh, the whole theory bases on the concept that all possibilities and all versions of you throughout time are existing simultaneously next to each other, right? There's a, there's a 1700s version of Dennis Rohde in medieval times who's like a court jester. Right who, now. Yeah, right now, because time doesn't exist. It's it's a fabrication of the human mind. On it's like, this earth or in another planet? In a different realm, like in a different reality. On this earth? No. Like on a, potentially on a different planet. Okay. That, or like a duplicate of earth where like a duplicate of me exists, but he's slightly different. Like all of these possibilities existing simultaneously next to each other. I right? could see, I, I mean, I don't know how to process that, I suppose, because I never really think about that. Yeah. But I would say if we are all made of atoms uh-huh. and we're all made of the stardust and then we're all connected in this way, yes. which makes sense to me, uh-huh. then I can see that maybe somehow, uh, I don't know, like those atoms are over there. The same atoms. How can my well, atoms I, here also think about be like there? on a molecular level, like how when we observe stuff under an electron microscope, those atoms pop in and out of existence sometimes, and we have no idea where the fuck they go. Um, like, could be that they are popping into some other alternate reality, a million trillion light years away. Yeah, or just a different possibility of what is happening, like how. If you're not, like, turn around looking at something, like, it actually exists in, like, a wave uh, until you look at it, and then it kind of pops into existence is what, like, the science shows. is weird uh, quantum physics stuff. But right, right, this hear, entire, that whole conversation to say that, like, what if acting, like, someone who's a very good actor is simply someone who's able to tap into these other already existing personas and versions of themselves that already exist in these alternate realities where if you're pretending to be you know some wild west dude from the 1800s you're tapping into like a version of yourself that already exists in this alternate reality you know what i'm saying well how is that possible because you don't know what scripts you're getting (laughs) I, I guess I just mean more the energy and like the I believe the, I, the I mindset. It... Yeah, so that's the theory is that, let me repeat that just in case we didn't get it. So the idea is that if you're a really good actor, what if that just means you are open to or more open to tapping into the other version of you that already exists in an alternate reality who lives in the 1800s or um has you know plays violin or whatever the character that you're portraying does like you're just embodying that version of your 
yourself that already exists. I don't know, man. I, I can't get with that one. Only because, like, I'm just, like, now just processing these thoughts the fresh. Initial, yeah, I got you. And so it's like, okay. <laughs> and um, I just think that it'd be a little bit ridiculous to think that there are so many versions of you out there to tap into. When I know for a fact from what I see in my experience in life. Yeah. Is that babies and humans, when we come out, we're copycats. We copy. Yeah. A baby living on its own, if it doesn't have any humans around to allow it to condition itself into what it is and copy that, yeah. then it's going to be whatever it sees. It may act like a damn tree. You know what I mean? If it's all around. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It needs to be uh, engaged mm-hmm. and Immersed influenced. Immersed in something. Yeah. Right. And so when I, when I see actors, I think that they're is some actors that have a thing in their brain or in their spirit or in their energy or just their personality, whatever you want to call it, that has that better ability to copy and communicate and and, and share that energy. Uh-huh. Because it's one thing to have an acting and you're just like reading the script and then there's another thing to have an acting to have the the person's like actually immersed in it and usually the people that are looking for Actors are looking for someone that studies the script and reads it, is, is a breeze to work with on set. Yeah. And if not, then their acting chops is just so good that they need to be in this part. Not to mention like their influence they have in the audience they can bring. But like you definitely have people that can feed off of energy and yeah. jump into those energy of characters that exist here on this earth already in shows. And, and they even have actors where they go meet the person to become more connected with that type of character whether they're taking classes on kung fu fighting or whether they're playing a part like andy Pro- dick or whatever yeah, yeah. dick who's the guy that jim carrey did oh uh, yeah um, what was his name man on the moon yeah, yeah. Um, andy kaufman andy kaufman so it's like you know it's crazy then you got shia labeouf who's like a crazy method actor yeah. right mm-hmm. where he will do exactly what that person does so he yeah. can so then in that situation, I would say he's just like, like he's, you know, that's totally dedicated to that. I don't think you need to like get the tattoo on your face in real life. Yeah. But you can just watch somebody getting a tattoo in, in real life. But like yeah. he's taking it, that copy to like a level of maximum. Yeah. Maximum. Yeah. Maximum after. Yeah. You know what I mean? To the max. Like I would hate, you can't, you can't cast him as a murderer. Yeah. It's, it'd be too he's deep, gonna, I guess. He's gonna have to go and <laughs> go see what that's him. like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe hmm. you could do it to monkeys. That's kind of like the closest probably feeling to it. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. If you're um, a method actor, I'm trying to think through of like what. Yeah. What he would do? You should see some. Yeah. What he would do to like get there. Maybe you would. Uh, Eat monkey brain. I don't know. No, I don't know that you. I mean, I don't. He would. I wouldn't. I'm just thinking no like brain, please. maybe you would simulate that. Oh, you mean like on a, like a virtual reality? Maybe. Or, uh, you know, there's probably some sort of like acting training they have where like, you can, yeah, like fake murder someone. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird topic. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the actors, I think that, I, in my opinion, if you think they're tapping into some other alternate reality that's completely like that character and they're tapping into it i i'm i'm like a i'm like 10 levels i'm I'm 3,000 levels below you're you're 3,000 levels higher with that i got you. thought my, i'm down below to where what i see with my eyes and where my own experience where i think what happens is yeah just some people are able to just uh portray that copying effect mm-hmm. you know better yeah it's just like intuition some people have better intuition you know yeah. spider senses or whatever that gut feeling, that thing. Some people say it's God talking to you. Some people yeah. say it's just like your senses or whatever. I like I like the concept that like we're all just kids, kind of like playing a role. Uh, you know, even when you're, even when you grow up and you get a job, and uh, that's just following the rules, man. Yeah, you're kind of just that's like, like the cattle going into the slaughterhouse. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion. <laughs> Like, I just see when I see everybody just being so obedient right now during the pandemic, I guess it's good to like work together. Yeah, well, for safety. Uh, but then there's like, a, you know, there's a lot of things that just feel like high school again. Yeah. Where there's a lot of rules I have to follow and direct. I mean, I don't know. Just feels very evasive more so than before. I feel like my. 
I don't know how to go there. I just, it just, I'm just, you know, it's, it's, it's unprecedented times for everybody. Well, and we're all going yeah, through it's it a slippery the same slope. Time. Yeah. It's definitely a slippery slope. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a new thing that I've never seen before. And, and, uh, and, and I don't think anyone has, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's novel. Uh, it's a novelty for, um, you know, anyone alive today. I don't think it remembers like the Spanish flu. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, man, it's a, it's a weird time. It's a weird yeah. time to be alive. Um, but yeah, actors are definitely, um, I think they're just better at good copying. Good pretenders. Good, good, good pretenders. copycats. Yeah, copycats. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What about you? I don't know. My theory, uh, oh, it's just a theory. I don't the, know that I, I don't necessarily believe reality. that. Uh, I don't, that's not like, oh, Evan Era believes that. No, it's just like a thought I had of like, huh. Do you think there's life in the earth? Or do you think it's totally what the textbooks say? Hardcore mantle burning with this layer, this layer, this layer. All of it's solid. Oh, no hollowness to it whatsoever. You mean like the theory that there's like a alien, no life. alien race like living inside the I don't know the say Earth. necessarily alien. I mean, I've heard that I mean, theory. alien race is can still be on this Earth alien. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean that you're an alien like from outside the Earth. I think all life on this Earth originated on this Earth. And there may be some things... They say like octopus probably came from a meteorite. Well, they definitely the way, like the way it is. Yeah, but um, but because it's not like anything on this earth, so maybe Wait, it run came, that back. Octopus came from a meteorite. Yeah, some theories are like the octopus came from a meteorite yeah. because that checks out. Because yeah. it's not like anything else on this earth. Yeah. So where did it come from? Horrifying creature. Right. It could be like a pigeon on a on a cruise boat that went from Florida to yeah. UK. Right. Yeah. Well, this could be like a thing on a, on a ship that travels that came from one planet, now it's in our water. Who knows? Yeah. All I'm saying is maybe it came from the center of the Earth. Who knows? All I'm saying is, do you, your question, and I just yeah. thought of this, is do you think there's anything in the Earth that's deeper than eight miles? Because that's as far as the humankind has dug. The humans have only dug eight miles deep. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but eight miles is that in one little hole. Not like we just like went down. No. Yeah. One hole, eight miles, couldn't keep digging anymore, it's too difficult. I have heard in this. Russia. I have heard this, but yeah, I have heard the same theory before. And there's nothing down there. No, yeah. like, dinosaur, no dug, big ass worm. It was like an experiment to see how, dig, how deep we could dig. And they got to a certain depth. In Russia, yep. Yeah, and they were like, okay, we don't ever need to dig again. This Wait. is enough. And now we've just and never... now all we have is books that show pictures of it. This is what it is. That's it. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm just asking. I right. really, I have no idea. Uh, in my opinion, I think there's I'm life. going off of what I learned in my public school education. Very good boy. I think, <laughs> that, I think that there is life. I think there is more down there. Yeah. Look at these monkeys, man. These monkeys and apes and gorillas. I was watching a YouTube video of a monkey at a zoo... And the monkey was like tapping on the window, pointing to the dude to come drop his Mountain Dew in the crack. And he's pointing to the crack because that's where the hole is. And the dude can pour the Mountain Dew in the hole. And then he goes on, and it goes through the little window pane. And the monkey goes down there and drink it. He licks his lips and he taps and he points. And the guy goes and like gets a different drink. And the monkey's like, no, no, no. And he points to that Mountain Dew. That's smart. He got eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and yeah. he can tell you and communicate to me. He's communicating to a yeah. stranger he's never met before. You know, and now, now, now they're not the smartest, right? I saw another monkey sitting no. on a tree, pick its butt, and he's <laughs> just being and passed he's out. He's smart enough that? to know that Mountain Dew is the only one with the crack in it. But yes, yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> so, so that's up here on the surface. Like I had an idea for a book. I was like, I wanted to write a science fiction book mm -hmm. where like the center of the Earth was like a, a world. It was like supreme technology, supreme beings, everything supreme, like just crazy. And they yeah. actually were driving the Earth as a ship, uh, and, the, and it was staying in the we're Goldilocks just zone. On the outside of it, yeah, and it stays in the Goldilocks zone of this place, so it's we can have what we have. Is the book is the book is the idea, but it's that's, never going to happen. That's a fascinating idea. And then and then the cancer on the surface of the earth oh, is us just was always trying to causing it. us to like deviate from the Goldilocks zone. Uh, so then they had to send out, you know, whatever the forces are. Like yeah. I was thinking, like these cool, like think of uh, the Hobbit style kind of characters, or like Lord yeah. of the Rings, like something just so cool, crazy, and they're coming out. To like take care of the problem, mm -hmm. 
And then there's other ones that like don't want them to kill everybody, not all of it. And you know, it's like a classic movie. Yeah. And then and it was like it was called uh, Civil War Earth. Hmm. <laughs> we may be on the brink of that soon. Yeah, it'd be like a fun book. But yeah, like I, th- I always thought there's something down there. Yeah. I'm yeah, not saying it's like be. cars and streets and we're all driving around. No, I'm saying like dinosaur time. Well, I like did hear that creatures. they recently uh, discovered there's like a huge ocean. Under the earth. Yeah. Yeah, bigger than our ocean. In yeah. the earth. Like a huge amount of water. Huge amount of water. Where there's Which, water, there's light. So we are back. Uh, camera battery died. Again, this is episode two of the podcast, so we're still getting all the kinks worked out. So uh, we're talking about the deep underground ocean. Yeah. That was just discovered. Uh, it's terrifying because, based on the creatures that live in our current ocean at like the crazy depths where there's we don't no even light, have all of them yet. Right, like we don't even know what's all what all is down there. But from what we've seen, like the things that like generate their own light, like because they're so deep that it's so dark that they have like a light source built into them. Those are horrifying creatures. Like they just look like from the depths of hell. Um, so to imagine what must be in that pocket of water that is vastly bigger than our current ocean. Dude, uh, I think the, I think, uh, where there's ground yeah. and water, there's life. Yeah. That's and, safe to uh, say. And, uh, I can't imagine what is on Mars, yeah. let alone what's on our own water, right? Down there at the bottom, yeah. all that pressure of water on yeah. those animals that live at the bottom of the ocean if life can survive under trillions of pounds of water on top of it like there's no sun and you have the immense weight of the ocean yeah at the bottom yeah and you're just cruising around like that's life bro no it's insane no way monsters down there yeah humans only reason only only weapon we have is our brain yeah like like to a to a to a lion we're just a jelly bean, you know a juicy grape. You're a juicy <laughs> grape, dude. Totally. <laughs> if, I, if I was a lion and I saw you, I'd like, mm, ooh yeah, let's go. I'm gonna eat like a king because I'm king of the jungle. <sighs> and we just fillet open like a jelly donut, just so sugary, juicy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What uh? What's your favorite food? It's a jelly food. donut. It made me think of food. I eat the Chipotle the most. Yeah. Um, and, and I love Chipotle. They sponsored me for a long time. So. Yeah. And then... You had that crazy unlimited card. I know. And it worked for 40 years. That was awesome. I love Chipotle. So I, and my favorite food is Chipotle. And then um, I eat there the most. Uh, and then probably like steak. Like juicy, good steak. Like good food. Yeah. Prepared. Like when I went to Cabo... And I caught a snapper, a red snapper, and a button, and it was like this big, and we fillet it on the boat. Yeah. And then when we get to the stock, I got two bags of like cod or uh, snapper. Mm-hmm. And the lady comes up and she takes the fish from me and hands me a bottle of tequila. <laughs> and we go to the beach bar right there next to the boat, the the yacht, the fishing yacht, and then the chef and I go to the back, and he starts preparing two flavors of the fish meat right there that was awesome and then i go back to my chair there's two coronas the lady takes the the tequila to the back to make our margaritas and then we're sitting there on the beach and then they serve us fish tacos that we just caught that's my favorite kind of food like experience yeah i don't have a favorite food i have favorite experiences okay so i want to experience my food like that yeah i want to experience my food like how joe rogan does I think that's awesome. Like to go in there, he catches his meat, he takes oh, it to the butcher, an and, then, yeah. and then he has the elk meat and he hands it to his friends. He's feeding his community, he's feeding his family off this one beast, mm-hmm. and it's like done by him. So the sense of how a human is hunting and gathering, how a human is, we're not designed to get fed through boxes at the grocery store. That's not our DNA. Yeah. So the further away we get from that, the more our species changing for whatever. I don't know which way it's going. Yeah. But I like the way that kind of experience is. I eat yeah. it out of the bag. I get my cheese out of the bag, man. I do. I got. I got. I got the same food. My chicken comes in a styrofoam. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if I had a choice. Yeah. Yeah. I that I can control, I would 
kind of do more stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My friend goes hunting every weekend and stuff with his kids, and that's cool too. You know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I used to hunt. I don't really anymore. But what, uh, what did you go for? Uh, I hunted deer, turkey. Um, yeah, those are really the only two I've ever hunted. Yeah. Does fish count as hunting? I guess it would. Yeah, fishing's hunting. Because you're hunting for food in a way. Do you? I uh, catch and release. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever actually caught a fish and then eaten it. Yeah, I remember my one, this one kid in my uh, neighborhood. Yeah. We would catch these carp. Yeah. And he would take the carp back. Wow. Really? You're not supposed to eat grass and, carp. And they would, uh, and this carp would be like this big. It was crazy. It was like so much fun catching them. And then he'd put them in the cooler. And then they would take it back to their house. And I was like, I can't. I told my parents, I'm like, you, we can eat this fish here? No. I was like, ugh. I remember going over there one day, and they had the fish in the bathtub, like, swimming around. What? They were getting ready to prepare or something. Wow. <laughs> I don't Maybe know. they're just keeping it as a pet. No. Ew. Carp eat, like, ducks and stuff. Really? No, no. Uh, catfish. Oh, yeah. 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 I saw a duck go down by a catfish, <laughs> and a duck go down by a, a turtle. I also saw ducks getting after it, but it's, like, gross. Dude. Yeah. Team up. Speaking of ducks, have you seen that uh, two turnt Tony on uh, TikTok? What is it? Two turnt Tony on TikTok. What's he do? He has ducks. Is this this dude who has ducks and like drinks like crazy? I don't know. Hilarious, hilarious. I saw a dude that has a white duck. Is that him? Yeah. His mom yells at him or something. Yep, He's always him. like has a beer or like a bingo. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I've seen some of those with the white hilarious. duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's, I guess it's a duck. Yeah, it's a cool duck. Fucking hilarious. I yeah, saw the one where like he's taking the couch out with his grandma or something to go drink, and the mom yells at. That's what I saw. Yeah. Last time. It's a good TikTok. formula. It's working for him. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of TikTok, follow me on TikTok at Evan Aramagic. Follow Dennis. Prank it up. Prank it up at Prank it up. Yeah, TikTok is finally paying people. So I know. Come, uh, come watch some TikTok videos. Really? That's how you're gonna say it? Yeah, man. TikTok is paying people, so come watch my video. <laughs> they know what the game is. You gotta make money off the social media. Why do you think we're doing the podcast? I love that guy. Money. I saw on Twitter. He's talking about OnlyFans, some comedian, I think. I don't know who it was. And I saw on Twitter, maybe, and he was like complaining about, I think this is a random dude complaining about OnlyFans accounts. And he was like, if, if you got OnlyFans and yeah, you think it. that your content is better, it costs more and is better than Hulu? Right. Then my Hulu, your content is better than and name like these shows that he pays for Hulu and yeah, you say I'm gonna pay that. you more. Which I'm not charging for the TikTok content, it's free, so come watch it. You know, it doesn't cost you a thing. Well yeah, and you learn some magic tricks to do yeah, on Exactly. A, I do your magic tricks on my nephews and stuff. Thank you. And nieces. Well yeah, thank you for coming in and doing the podcast, man. Um Let's do it again. Yeah, we definitely will. I wanna see video three, four, five. Yeah. Uh, Who's the next guest? Um, not sure yet. Well, we're if you don't get anybody to, uh, in lined up, I'll come back down and do it again. Yeah, definitely. Because the drive wasn't bad, and I enjoy this. Awesome. I'm uh, telling you, the last time I tried a podcast, yeah. you really should consider filming everything at the very beginning. What do you mean? Of people talking, because that might be the better discussion. What do you mean? Like everything at the beginning? Like, the, you know, this is the podcast. Yeah. But then you should have, like, the precast. Oh. And then everything that's happening before the podcast is also like another clip later. Gotcha. And then you can censor out what needs to be censored out. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of the conversation <laughs> that happens before the podcast the turns on is like, mm. The precast, that would be interesting. Yeah, that's that probably cool. where the most gold is, see? The yeah. true authentic and genuinity yeah. of things, of conversation that people like watching on podcasts. True. The precast could be also interesting. And you could even have like a offcast area. Yeah. And then when they walk in, just let them all know, okay, just be forewarned, this is the precast. You might catch some gold in yeah, those places. Just have cameras set up like, like in a green room type area. Yeah. But yeah, might do that. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, leave your comments down below for future guests you'd like me to have on the podcast. Also, leave some questions down there in the comments. Uh, we'll be doing Q&A segment on the next show. We're doing some reoccurring segments on the podcast, stuff you guys can look forward to. Send in your questions. If you have any stories you want to share, advice you want to ask for, happy to help 
So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you to my guest, Dennis Rohde. Yeah, prankkits.com. Check it out. Go get yourself prankkits. some prank I'll toys. definitely link it in the description if you're new to the podcast. Be sure to subscribe to it on YouTube. We have a video version of it. If you're listening to it on an audio platform uh, like Stitcher or any of the other podcast platforms that we are putting this on, be sure to follow us there. Thank you guys once again. I am your host, Evan Era, and uh, this is the Evan Era Podcast. It's episode two. See you on the next one. Peace.